yeah, I'm looking at back on the, on the year ahead, and on the year behind us, and looking forward to the year ahead. Um, one of the, the challenges of, of Malvern is that um, although a fee-paying school, the uh, fees are, are low at, at 2,500 Rand, there's only about a 50% of parents who can afford to pay fees. So the school really runs on the sort of sniff of an oil rag. And in addition to this, it's, it's ranked as a, as a quintile four school. So simply because you know, it used to be a, a white school in the old days, and it used to be in a, in a, in a sort of a, a semi-affluent area. So the school gets, I think, the princely sum of 400 and something thousand rand from the government each year. So one of the first things we set out to do was to try and just do a bit of fundraising, just for some infrastructure projects. Um, to convert an outside air eating area where the children could at least get some shade when they ate the, at their lunch. So we've, um, in this year, we raised 35,000 rand towards that. We're about halfway. And we need to try and raise the, the balance of that during the course of this year. And the other thing we looked at was you know, trying to get people to at least pay something. And um, Mark has put into place a, a program that to, all the exemptions would be offered. There would never be full exemptions. And even if it was just a token amount of, of 50 rand or 100 rand, he encouraged all parents um, or, or guardians to try and, and, and pay that, just so that they at least feel that they are then part of the school and contributing to it. And um, I think you've got about a 50% success rate on that, Marcus, during the year. So I'm going to hand over to, to Marcus now just to take us through some of the other achievements on the, on the teacher development side of things. We, we really focused, and what, what happened was uh, I come from an IT company, and we thought that it would be best for us to try and improve the, the skills of the teachers so that they'd be in a better position to, to um, teach the learners. Um, so what we did within our company was we gave each member of staff a, a day, um, a year, for, for social responsibility, which they could then spend at Melvern or at schools closer to our work in four ways, where we've done some reading programs with some of the primary schools there. And uh, Marcus, perhaps you want to just take us through some of the projects that we went through this year. As the uh, photos indicate there, what the uh, Paul's company um, has done this year, they came to school, and I see our leaders here. Um, a leader coordinated the whole computer training from metrics. Um, and thank you again, a leader. And it's nice seeing you. So we started with basic computer skills. And you know, sometimes it's shocking that um, we don't really know how to work on a computer, although we're educators. And, um, I must, I must indicate here as well that, you know, with uh, Paul's company coming in um, and uh, what Paul forgot to mention is they then donated about six laptops to the school to assist with the computer training as well. And um, this happened over, I think, a four-month period where a leader and some of the uh, other employ employees of Paul's company came into school and they had different um, sections of training with basic computer skills, uh, Word, Excel, Access, um, and Internet as well. And this assisted educators to draw up their question papers, also to generate their marks for, for reports. And it has assisted the school a lot. So, so now instead of getting a handwritten um, exam uh, paper to moderate, you would get a typed uh, exam paper for moderation, and it just made things easier um, at school. Um, there's also the attendance register with the different sections that people attended, because not everybody would attend the MS Word uh, training session, and not everybody would have attended the internet or, or a training session at school. Thanks. And there are other programs as well. Some of our staff are we're keen to help out with the dance program that, that the school ha has um, conducted with Toko Sun. And then there's a vegetable garden on the, on the spare field ab above the road as well. So uh, back to you, Marcus, just to go through some of the benefits that the, your team experienced from the workshops. PFP has, 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 uh, you know, has really done a lot um, for me as an individual, especially with uh, personal growth. Um, one of the things that I will always take away uh, from PFP is to listen. And uh, time to think was the one uh, that taught us how to listen. And, and you know, with everything that uh, all the workshops that we attended this year, um, 
we learned from, from each one. And each one of those we could take back to our schools. The one that taught us that we are consultants as well at our schools, listening to other people and eventually, you, you know, when everybody walks into your office, they want your advice. Somebody walks into your office and, and they must make a decision whether they must leave the school or stay at the school and they want you to make that decision for them. And through this, um, I've learned that if somebody comes into my office, it doesn't matter whether they take 30 minutes to give me their story, I sit and I listen. And when they're done eventually, then I still ask them, now what do you want to do? And um, that was an important aspect. And, and also how to treat our parents at school, um, how to sit and listen to them as well. Um, it has it is definitely made me a better manager. It has definitely equipped me for the task at hand. Now, you can see that's our uh, academic stats. Um, that is just an average on, of our academic stats at school. And we were always, and I'm not going to um, you know, use it as an excuse, not everybody speaks English, and it is so difficult teaching a child English that is his fourth language, or not even his language at all. It will take a grade one educator about six months to teach a grade one child English before you could actually start with the assessment. And then, you know, and then you might sit there and then uh, you would have an easy answer and say, let's just uh, send a, a child to a school where he can be taught in his vernacular. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. What a lot of us do not understand, and it seems what government failed to understand, is uh, language is associated with the culture. A, a Sutu speaking parent will not allow his child to be taught Zulu. And the same as a Zulu-speaking parent will not be allow his child to be taught Sasutu because it comes with culture. And that makes it a bit difficult. And I also understand that every parent wants their children to be better than them. And that's why parents would choose to send their children to English medium schools because they want their kids to be better. I'm, I'm also quite happy with uh, Malvern for the academic progress that we have made over the years. About four or five years ago, um, as unbelievable as it might sound, we were 30% school. And we have improved over the years. And I do believe that we will reach our 90% mark and um, we will be a school to be reckoned with. I think the best thing, and, and, and all my colleagues would mention this, is us being partnered uh, with people in the corporate world. It is also just as much as, as, as Ernst and, and Andre and them have mentioned how our schooling system opened up their eyes. They also opened up, I believe, our eyes to see how things are run from a corporate perspective and also meeting with other business people as well and, and learning from them. And also, uh, you know, um, Paul is very professional. And, and when you discuss things with your partner and, and you find out, you know, how, it, uh, how things work in, in the corporate world, and then you sit and you compare it with how things work in our public institutions, then there's a lot of things you can take from there in, and incorporate it into, into our schooling system. Um, networking has is, is, is really worked for me. Um, I met Adele, and um, Adele is now going to work with our school. Um, our school has been invited to, uh, I just can't remember the company's name that Adele has introduced me to. They're having an auction in uh, February, and some of the proceeds from that art auction will be donated to our school. Onico. Onico. That's the name of the company. Yeah. 
Yeah, from, from my side, it's been hugely rewarding being part of this program. Um, I, I especially enjoyed being in, in the COP sessions and, and just hearing the, the, the stories from, from Gracia and Sabina and Julia and Otto and just the, 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 the challenges they, they faced and the, I don't know, the, the courage with which they, they approached it and the commitment and love that they showed to their schools, it was, it was heartwarming. And for me, it, it really did open my eyes and it kind of exposed me to a, a different part of our society that I don't normally uh, interact with. So for me, it was inspirational. Um, I feel I've definitely grown as a person as a result of it. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to continuing being part of Partners for Possibility. It's not, certainly not a, a one-year exercise. Um, it'll, it'll carry on well into the future. And we're also fortunate enough to be able to make a difference in, in, in one boy's life. Um, uh, through Gracia, we, we um, were introduced to a boy called William Khalele, who's an exceptionally bright boy. He, um, against the odds, he lives in a, in a shack with his granny's sister, um, close to El Dorado Park. And um, yeah, we've managed to get him a scholarship to attend the school I went to and my boys go to currently, which is King Edward School. So um, yeah, so my wife and I are sponsoring him at the boarding school. He's fitting in really well, and yeah, it's it's, it's wonderful. You know, my wife sort of you know adopted him as one of her own. So wow. it's yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's being able to give back like that that really kind of is what the program's all about. And it's, it's heartwarming for me and you know, what's, what's more important in life than having a warm heart. And just to close, yeah, the partnership's continuing. So the, the programs will carry on next year. Marks and I'll keep on, sorry, this year. Marks and I'll keep on, on, on meeting regularly. And um, the, the education uh, sessions will, will continue as well. And yeah, I'm sure the, the partnership will continue many years into the future. So thank you, Marcus, for all your contribution to our partnership. Um, you know when Paul walked into the school, Paul came to work to assist and to uplift the school. And as Paul has mentioned, he then immediately started looking for people to, to fund our feeding, feeding uh, area where learners can sit and eat from, from the feeding scheme. We have about 400 learners in our feeding scheme. And then Paul also got his whole company involved to assist, um, whether it's with food gardening or to come and assist with the dancing classes or the computer training of, of educators. And, and I am grateful and I am happy that they partnered us. Um, we're the only two males that have been partnered, uh, but a good combination. And thank you very much, Paul. And hopefully we will work together this year. Thank you.